hey my little aliens i just wanted to put this in the intro so you guys know i'm really happy that we got to 40 subscribers that's probably not a lot for most people but for me that is it just means i have 40 new friends in this world and i appreciate you guys okay now you can get into the video peace whoa this looks so cool okay before you ask yes i got new lighting systems so there's like lights everywhere and you can see my shadow now i feel really cool sorry <laughs> This is really cool to me because I'm a YouTuber and after eight months, I finally got it put together. So yeah. <laughs> so today I realized that I've actually never shared with you my first ever poem that I wrote in my class. Cause if you didn't know, I used to be a really, really like bad student. Just like, not that I did bad things. I just didn't care. Does that make sense? Like, because I wasn't from here and I didn't understand English well, I never really cared enough to learn English or be participant in it. So in eighth grade, well, seventh grade, I finally like started understanding what school was about and like why we go to school and everything. But in eighth grade, I realized that I really like English. I like writing and everything about it. Just the subject in general is fascinating to me. And in eighth grade, we were doing this like poetry slam thing as an assignment and that's when I learned what poetry was, and I wrote my first poem in class. And it's quite long, to be honest, so this might be longer than my normal poetry videos, but this was my first real poem that I'm very proud of. I think it has a lot of meaning. It's a huge metaphor that I'll explain in the end. But let's we'll get back into that, okay? Let's go. It's called She's a Flame, and it's obviously by me, and I wrote this January 12th, 2016. My body was stuck six feet underground, running away, yet my soul wandered away, feeling confused, alone, and very much depressed. But the girl who came by every day really was alone. No parents, no siblings. All she had was the ability of breathing and feeling, wishing only the worst for herself. The pastor would tell her, pray it, don't say it, only God needs to hear it. But at the end of the day, she'd still throw herself against the wall and punish herself for things that have already been done. Boo-hoo, the wall cried, making her bite her tongue just to taste that warm blood. She was a flame ready to be blown and then thrown away. My past is a dark, depressing, desireless, blurry memory, full of drugs and bad decisions, people forcing me to do things that felt so right but did me so wrong. I am a flame and my tears are the gasoline dripping down causing me to grow. I was never blown then thrown. The world said we have choices but none of us have the voices. Everything that's right is considered wrong. You get judged on the daily for things that have already been done. The world said we have choices, but none of us are making noises. They said do what's right, but you don't bite and instead fight. They say that the only thing you should fear is fear itself, but the only thing you should fear is yourself. You don't know anything until you play with the dangerous fire and meet the devil himself, his red burning eye into your soul. You're the one who took the drugs. You're the one who cut deeper and deeper until you bled away the pain. But you should have instead gained a little courage to say it or pray it. At last, the girl who came by every day was a flame that was blown away and remade into a white, pain-free candle. The end. So, as y'all can tell, that was a little strong for maybe, like, triggered, like, sorry. Um, I wrote this at a time where in life when I was going through a lot, not family wise or like cutting or whatever, like that's not why I'm wearing sleeves, I swear. It's just during the time I felt very pressured because I was in eighth grade and I was like, oh my god, I want to get into a good high school. I need to have all A's. I felt very intimidated and pressured and impatient over everything. I just wanted to like leave middle school and get out of the way. And I would meet people like that too because because you are in 8th grade, all your friends around you have the same pressure for the most part. And it's hard on everyone. But over time, you realize that what you have to do is not stress over it. Live with it. Like incorporate it. Make it your passion, a motivation for you to keep going. Because once you're done with middle school and you have the highest grades, every high school that's like a magnet school, a charter school is going to want you. And then when you are in high school, you're going to be used to that. When having all your pre repeat classes with all A's, that's how you're going to do in high school. Or whatever your scenario is. It's not just have to do with school. It's, if it's your job, if you know you hate working at McDonald's or something, at least know it's an experience. And it's part of your life that you have to go through so that when you do have your hard job that 
pays way more, but you have more hours, you know how to deal with that. If you know what I mean? You need your experience so that you can have your lesson, I guess. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, the metaphor behind this is that it's worth it and that there's always going to be like a resolvement at the end of it. So thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry I didn't post on Tuesday. I was doing quinceanera stuff. If you're ever interested in that, just like comment down below and I'll share with you. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Um, I'll see you guys in the future. Bye!